guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm Noelle. I'm a photographer and a content creator. And today I'm gonna to be talking about a very highly requested video from you guys, which is digital cameras, specifically the Canon G7X. This is not only a digital camera, but it is a high quality point and shoot. So today we're gonna to be going over all of the asked questions that you guys had for me on Instagram. First of all, this is my new setup. This is my new room in my apartment, downtown Chicago. I just moved from London back to Minnesota and now I'm in Chicago. So this is my first apartment by myself. So this is gonna be my new setup. This is where I'm gonna be filming from now on. I'm gonna be trying to stay very consistent with YouTube now that I have my own space to create. So today, without further ado, I wanted to talk about the digital camera series that I have been saying that I'm gonna be filming on Instagram for months now. So there are some main differences between cameras that people are using. When you say digital cameras, that means a lot of things. But when you're talking about these type of cameras that have one fixed lens on them, you cannot change the lens, that's called a point and shoot. The Canon G7X specifically is a very high quality, high end point and shoot. We're gonna be going over the settings for point and shoots today. This goes for Canon. It might be a little bit different for other brands, but I'm going to be showing you on the Canon G7X, so that's what we're gonna be talking about. Let's get straight into the questions that you guys had for me. The biggest question I got was, what are your camera settings? Talk about your settings. I'm dying to know what settings you used. An overarching theme of people want to know what settings that I'm using for the Canon G7X. The trends are going around of digital cameras, which are most of the people are talking about point and shoots, and they just keep asking everybody for their settings. Now, as a photographer, it's a little, it's slightly frustrating um, because you change your settings based on the lighting and the situation that you are shooting in. I shoot my pictures on my Canon G7X in one spot. If you use those same exact settings, they're not gonna turn out the same. There are some settings on the camera that I do change my camera to that you can change yours as well that I think are going to make your photos look more how you want them to look. We're gonna start with setting the camera up. You turned your camera on for the very first time. We're going to talk about this dial right here on the top and what these all mean. There's little letters that go around in a circle on the top and it's a dial. So you turn them and those are the modes of your camera. There's automatic and there's manual and they sound like exactly what they do. If you put on automatic, your camera's going to do all of the settings for you. You don't need to touch a thing. It's automatically gonna do everything for you. Now, if you have it on manual, you're gonna need to change all of the settings yourself to perfectly expose your photo. So that's when you're gonna need to know your aperture, your shutter speed, and your ISO. We're not gonna get there yet. We're gonna talk about everything in between. So there's automatic and there's manual, and then there's all the other dials on your mode settings. And that's gonna be everything in between. This is where it ranges a little bit different from brand to brand, but I'm specifically gonna be talking about this camera and what the modes mean on it. After automatic, there is a P. On the Canon cameras, the P means program. Then we have TV, which is shutter priority. Then we have AV, which is aperture priority. Then on the dial is manual, like I was talking about. Think about it like this. You're gonna start it automatic, no control over anything. It's gonna automatically do everything for you. Then there's manual, where you have to do everything for yourself. And all of these other settings are going to be things in between that. So it's gonna give you control over certain settings, but it's going to automatically do the other settings for you. So you can play around with the different modes, but that's what they mean. Basically, it is just a range of different options of how much or how little control you have over your three main settings, which is aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. A few other settings that I always have my camera on when I'm taking flash photos or portrait photos, because I'm taking a lot of photos of people, and that's when everybody was asking me what my settings are. So if you turn your camera on again, in the top corner, there's going to be a Q. You're gonna click on that. In the top left corner of your screen is going to be AF method, which is the autofocus method. I always have it on face plus tracking. So that's what my camera's on right now. What I'm seeing on my screen right now is a box around my face. When I move, the box moves with my face. So that way I'm always staying in focus. It's tracking my face. That is, in my opinion, the best setting to have your camera on so that your face is always in focus and you're not getting accidentally blurry photos. Under the autofocus, it's going to be another focus setting. I always have it on Servo AF 
or just servo instead of one shot because again that's going to help focus on moving subjects and if you've watched any of my videos you know that we're constantly moving while we're taking pictures so that we look more natural and less stiff under that we have image quality i always shoot on raw i'm going to put some information up here on the screen about what the difference between raw and jpeg is but in simple terms if you want the ability to be able to control a lot of different editing settings in your photo, RAW is going to be exactly how the camera takes the photo. You're going to have a lot more control over your editing. So if you're going to be using Lightroom and you want to play around with editing and you want to make it super customized and you want to be able to control all of the aspects of your editing, I would put, put your camera in RAW. If you don't want to play around with editing that much, you just want to use some presets and some already like built filters in certain apps like Tezza, VSCO, Visco, whatever we're calling it. In Scram, if you're just wanting to like edit it just a little bit or just slap a filter on it, that's when you should be using JPEG. But that's how I think about it. Next, we're gonna go to the other side of the screen for the settings. We're on the right hand side where it says, I'm guessing your camera, it's three down. It will say AWB, which stands for auto white balance. The white balance in your photos is how blue or how yellow. Based on the conditions that are outside at the current moment, that's what you're going to want to set your white balance to. Now you can leave it on auto white balance if you just want the camera to do it for you. But if for some reason you're outside and your photos look really yellow and you don't want them to be so yellow, go into your white balance and just play around. It will show you right on the screen what it's going to look like. It will give you a little preview. So there's daylight, shade, cloudy, and there's different settings. It tells you exactly what they're meant to be for. So you can match what the weather looks outside, what the lighting situation is outside, to what it says on the screen. Next, and the last setting that I change on my pictures when I'm taking portraits, is the one under white balance, and that's going to be picture style. Now, these also tell you exactly what they do right on the camera. So you can read and look through them. But, you can have it on auto, that's literally just going to be automatically doing all the settings for you, like I've been saying. What I put it on when I'm taking pictures of people is portrait. If you go look at what portrait says, it's ideal for close-ups of people. It smooths skin tones and your hair. So if you are struggling with not liking how the photo is turning out, I would definitely try to change it to portrait. Um, obviously, if you're not taking portraits, there's different settings, like there's a landscape setting. The landscape setting is going to be for vivid blue skies and green foliage. They're going to focus on different things. Um, everything that you're changing in your camera is going to customize your photo in a way that's going to have you editing less after you get the photos off your camera. I always like to shoot with flash on. So when you turn your flash on this camera, you need to make sure that you are actually bringing the flash up or there is going to be no flash. It goes up. There's no wrong or right way to do things. That's why all the settings are there. They're there to be used. So there's no right or wrong way to do things. So whatever you choose, do whatever is easiest and best for you and how you're taking photos. If you're on a night out and you're just trying to take photos quick and you don't want to mess with the settings, automatic might be for you. If you're trying to learn photography, and you actually want to learn how to use your camera, manual is going to be the best way to start learning and everything in between is going to help you get to manual. I'm going to keep going through your questions on Instagram specifically about the Canon G7X. How do you make your images turn out more crisp? I feel like the quality of my G7X is off. Again, if you have all those settings on there, it could be a focusing issue. I really do think that changing it to the autofocus face tracking will help and the servo will also help because that's going to be the best way to shoot when things are moving and I think that will help you with your focusing issues, in my opinion. If it doesn't, let me know, leave a comment and I will try to figure that out. How do you get the photos from your camera to your phone? There's a couple different ways that you can do this. There's an SD card reader that you can buy that either will plug into your computer or right into your phone. So you literally just take the SD card out of the camera, this little guy right here and you will put it in the reader and plug it straight into your phone or straight into the computer and that's one way that you can get your uh, pictures off of the camera. That's really easy, really simple. Just make sure that you're getting the right one that plugs into either your phone or your computer. I will link some in the caption below. 
that are just on Amazon. The next way you can get your photos off of your camera is the Canon Connect app. It's actually called Camera Connect. That's the Canon app. I think every brand has their own app, but for Canon, it's Camera Connect. You go on and you connect your phone to your camera from either Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. I've been using the Wi-Fi one recently. I used to use Bluetooth all the time, but now I'm using the Wi-Fi one. And it's so simple. You just turn this on and you make sure your Wi-Fi connection is on. And then you go onto your Wi-Fi settings in your phone and you click the Canon G7X Wi-Fi setting. That's gonna connect them. You're gonna open up the app and then there's an, I'll put it up on the screen right here. It literally says download photos. Once it's connected, it will download all of the photos. Super simple. My computer actually has an SD card reader built into it. So if you do have a MacBook, um, sometimes they have the SD card readers right in them so you don't even have to buy an extra one. And last but not least, someone asked me what are some good affordable cameras that are similar to this. How this camera is made is very unique. It's a very high end point and shoot camera. So yes, it's going to be expensive and it got way more expensive when everybody started buying them. So now they're hard to come by. I did make a list on my Amazon storefront of different camera options. They're not gonna be as high quality as this one. This is a very unique camera and there's a reason that it went viral because it is a very unique high quality point and shoot. I will link a couple other options that I think are of good quality at a smaller price. I will have that linked in the caption for you guys. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be making a separate video talking about shooting in manual and those settings of a camera. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe. I am going to be making videos and hopefully putting out one or two a week. But the next video I have up will be of the manual shooting settings. I'm going to be doing a moving to Chicago series and an apartment tour coming up because this is my brand new apartment that I just moved into two weeks ago at this point. But anyway, if you have any other questions for me about the Canon G7X, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I will be talking about manual settings next. Thank you and I will see you in my next video.